Hey, welcome, or well, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Uh -huh. What I do know is that this little palette that I bought from eBay super cheap contains pigments from one of the companies on my I want to try them this year list and that particular company is that could have gone smoother couldn't it really Cleona Cosmetics so if you want to see exactly how I created this look, which shades I used, and what I think of the brand, <sighs> neighbours are screaming at each other again. Deep joy, sit back, relax, enjoy the film. I'm going to find some earplugs. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Don't know how much of this I will have shown you in the intro. This is a... It's just a really cheap, empty magnetic palette that I bought off of eBay, I think, for a couple of quid. But the reason I liked it is because it had a little square window so you could see what the colours were. And the little card that was inside the um, delivery with, with the delivery slip had their logo on, which coincidentally fits perfectly in that little window. So I kind of stuck that in there like that because it's really cute. I only stuck it in with scotch tape, so it's easy enough to take back out again. If I decide I'm going to use this in something different. But I thought, because my huge um, magnetic palette is like massive, because it's double-sided and everything, I thought, if I'm going to show you stuff um, on here, it's much easier just to do this, otherwise I'm trying to cover up the colours I'm not using, and it's just crazy. So this is Cleona Cosmetics. Okay. <clears throat> and... These are the colours. Now these, this is a uh, indie company based in Canada, and I bought these from Etsy. Uh, they have an Insta and a Facebook. Handmade, vegan, and cruelty-free cosmetics. Um, and I'd always pronounced it Cleona because it looks kind of Welsh. So because I've got you know, Welsh in there, I've, I've always pronounced it Cleona, but apparently I'm doing it right because they've actually got like the dictionary how to pronounce thing there, which is awesome. So I actually bought these on the very last day of January um, because they had a deal on where the um, they got a discount on the actual shadows and they'd got a special offer on, on international shipping. It was only eight Canadian dollars. So I jumped at the chance. Uh, so the four shades that I've got are Tundra, Bookworm, Cryospear and Necromancer. I have swatched them. I'll put them up on screen. I think I swatched them uh, Bookworm, Tundra, Cryospear, Necromancer. But I swatched them a while ago because I was waiting for this palette to arrive. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know, but I'll put the swatches on screen as I'm zooming in and talking to you about my usual housekeeping. Um, so these were... Delivery note. The mats were... Uh, 480 Canadian dollars and the two sort of shimmery duochromes <coughs> duo 
were five dollars twenty that's Canadian dollars again um, so basically my order came to twenty Canadian dollars so with the international shipping that they had the special offer on on eight dollars came to twenty eight Canadian dollars I can't remember how much that turned out to be in UK money so I will try and remember to either annotate it on the screen or put it in the description box but if I forget give me a nudge in the comments I'm quite happy for you to do that right let's get you zoomed in while I'm doing the housekeeping with the swatches here I'm gonna be very up close and personal when the swatches come off don't, don't be scared right my channel is aimed at all skill levels from absolute beginners to complete experts so I talk you through every single step stage by stage I do both eyes on screen I don't cut out any blending I don't speed things up um, so you can easily follow me if you've never done anything like this before um, I've actually got quite a few um, more senior transgender ladies who are very recently um, transitioning and they've actually given me feedback saying this is fantastic because they don't feel they're strong enough yet or brave enough yet to go into somewhere and ask for help on doing makeup but this is great because I zoom straight in and I talk them through and um, one of them actually got complimented on their makeup the other day so that was fantastic that's awesome awesome feedback right hello I'm back now if you are more expert and you blend faster than me because of my chronic pain I can't always blend that quickly either up there or down there there's a speed widget please feel free to speed me up I won't be offended you may lose a little bit of the ASMR effect with the voice but so be it right I've got deep set eyes which a lot of people confuse as being hooded eyes because if I cover my mobile lid and then cover my mobile lid and then close my eye you can see I've got as much lid again that folds and tucks back in so I have similar issues that people with hooded eyes have where I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid I can't just do a pretty cut my crease along my eyeball I have to go much higher up and do completely different shapes to most people and when I'm applying glitters, even with a glitter glue, I will normally get patching through here. Now, to determine whether you have a hooded eye or not, when you look forward with your eyes open, I can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded eyes, I have deep set eyes. If your static lid covers any of your mobile lid, you either have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorials. All you need to do is get a brush like this with your eyes open just sketch where you need your crease colour to be. So for example if you imagine that I couldn't see any of my mobile lid here I would create my crease about two or three mils just above so that it gives the illusion of having a visible mobile lid obviously this will reduce the space between your crease line and your brow so all you need to do when I'm using a big, big fluffy brush you use a smaller one when I'm using a smaller one you need to use a tapered one that you know comes up to a point like this or is um, very very compact at the top because whatever the, the width at the top of the brush that's how far it will blend out on your eye right I have washed moisturized SPF and primed my skin with my usual antiperspirant primer um, underneath that today I have actually got some of my Mario Badescu because my skin was feeling a little bit tight um, 
I've, I've got oily combo skin, so my T-zone is very, very oily. It repels foundation. Uh, my, my cheeks and my jawline can get very, very dry, as can, surprisingly, just my hairline here. Um, and I, I was starting to feel very, very tight in those areas, so I just popped a bit of the Mario Badescu on. And, oh, sorry, I think I've got either powder or I've got an errant eyelash wandering around in my eye somewhere. Uh, on my eyes, I have got Revolution Conceal and Define in shade C1. And I have set that with my Coty S1. Right, let's get around to putting some of these colours on, shall we? So I'm going to start off with my Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. I was going to change my mind and start with the eyeshadow brush, but no, I'm going to use my crease brush. So you can see this is super fluffy. If you've had to move your crease up, go for something more tapered. Maybe like this. Or if you've had to move it up a very long way, maybe like this. Okay. Right, I am going to dip into, haven't learned the names yet, so neither the delivery notes, so I don't have to keep turning the damn thing over and telling you what colour I'm using. Right, I'm going to go into Tundra, which is the light blue. Yeah, a little bit of kick up in the pan. Really doesn't worry me though, because I can just pick that up next time round. You can see at least when you when it's that softly packed, you can get colour on your brush. Right, I'm going to tap off on my colour switch, so I hope you don't get full out. And I'm going to start off at the outside edge here, and I'm going to do windscreen wiper movements backwards and forwards through my crease. If you've moved your cre wow, that's a beautiful colour. If you've moved your crease up, you follow the line that you've put down. Okay. Wow. I'm so excited for Jeffrey's palette. It launches later on today. Problem is, Hubby doesn't get paid for another fortnight, and Hubby's buying it for me for my birthday in May. So I've got to pray that um, there's still some in stock on 15th of April. So please send goodwill out for me if this film goes up before then. Right, I've picked up the kick up and tapped off again and now this time what I'm going to do uh, you know I'm nearly 45 years old I will be 45 in about oof, six weeks that's depressing actually no it's only about four and a half weeks now oh it's even worse um, so you know the skin on my eyelids moves I've also lost 10 stone in the last few years so you know so in order to make sure that we don't get any patchy bits where the lid has moved and the shadow has missed it, what we're going to do is tiny, tiny little circular movements. Hold your brushes right at the end um, when you're doing this sort of blending or any kind of blending so that you put as little pressure on your eye as possible. All right? So we're going to do circular movements to here and then without taking our brush off we're going to go up slightly reverse the direction and come back. I'll show you what I mean. So, keeping the bottom of the bristles in contact with that line we've just done. Circular movements to the middle without taking your brush off the skin. Go up slightly, reverse the direction and do exactly the same thing coming back out. Now, because I've got, I'm lucky I've got a lot of lid space I can actually go up again, so I'm just going to pick up a little bit more pigment because I do struggle just here and here and here because of very, very deep creasing. This was caused by the ophthalmic when I was like five, six years old because uh, I actually blind in that eye. So I can actually go up again and come across. Now I like to try and leave sort of four or five mils below my brow just so that when I put my brow highlight on it notices more. It's also 
um, a more up-to-date way of doing it. Taking colour right up to your brows, especially blues, is very 1980s and not actually almost almost 1970s as well. Um, so it's good to leave a bit of a gap. And I mean, regular viewers know that I will actually do an all shimmer look. So you definitely need to leave a gap then, otherwise you're not going to be able to differentiate your brow highlight from the actual colours you've put on your on your lid. So once I'm happy with my circular movements that I'm happy with the amount of pigment laid down to double double check that I've not got any gaps anywhere I'll do short windscreen wipers in overlapping up and down movements just to make sure we've absolutely covered it and that is a, a beautiful shade Light I mean, blues are very difficult to produce anyway. Light blues are very, very difficult to do um, because they they either go patchy or when you blend them, they blend away. You have to be very, very careful with them. Um, normally, I would use a light blue on a non-set base, but I want to. I've, I've been doing a lot of non-set bases recently. I wanted to go back to doing. One of my original set bases, like I started off with. So, same thing with this side, start off with the windscreen wiper. Now I do struggle here because of this deep creasing. You can see I've still got gapping there. And unfortunately I do have to actually stretch my lid out to sort that out. Doing the circular movements doesn't actually sort that out because my creases are so deep. Do not do that unless you absolutely have to. Um, I don't need to do it on this side, but because of the creases on that one is so deep, I do have to. <laughs> so that shows you, even when I was five years old, which is going to be 40 years ago this year, pulling that eyelid around has stretched the skin so much. It has given me those extra deep creases. The skin on your eyelids is the most delicate skin on your body. Do not abuse it, okay? I can't stress that more strongly. So again, and I can show you with my eyes shut this time. Circular movements to the middle, up a bit, reverse the direction, come back. For most people, that will fill your eye, but I need to grab a wee bit more and just do that top corner there because I do have, as I said I'm actually lucky that I've got this amount of lid space it means I can do some really sort of uh, editorial or almost avant-garde looks um, because I have more space to play with so I'm extremely lucky in that respect and then just going over it all with the short windscreen wiper movements just to make sure we've absolutely blended it out I do love these Royal and Langnickel brushes they are by far the best I've used and this was two quid for goodness sake honestly right I'm going to use this washcloth is clean it's fresh out of the washing machine it's just stained from having used pigments uh, so I'm going to take the colour off of the brush with this. I find this is much gentler on the bristles than the colour switch. And there can also you can also have issues with the colour switch where um, when, you, when you twirl you can sometimes pick up a previous colour that you've cleaned. Whereas with, the, with this obviously you move to a clean part before you start taking the colour off. So, uh, But I do find that useful for tapping off into because it keeps all your dust in one place it's much easier to keep it all clean right so I'm going to use the same brush and go into a bookworm which is this beautiful tealy green Ooh, greeny blue it's one of those ones that if you put it with a blue it'll look slightly more green and if you put it with a green it'll look slightly more blue I love that love 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 that although this is more this does have more blue <clears throat> than green elements to it 
This again is very softly pressed, there's a lot of kick up. <clears throat> so I'm going to tap off. Now I'm going to start the same way by doing through the crease. This time though, I'm not going to travel up the eye when I do the circular movements. And rather than just keeping the bottom of the bristles in touch with the line, I'm going to try and keep more, the, more of the middle of the brush in contact with that line. I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> so, again we start off with... These shadows are amazing. I've not used Kleana before. They're on my list of... Oh, okay, now that is because my eye has wept a bit. Well, I think I've got something in there and that's really annoying. Right, okay, I'm just going to pause you a minute and sort this out because it's otherwise it's going to ruin the look. Actually, I wonder if I can buff that with a clean brush. And blend that out a little bit. This is the problem that I get when my eyes are watery, that it will, <clears throat> unfortunately, change the colour of a mat. Let's see if I can... I think I might just be able to get away with that. I might have to cut the crease to cover that. No, I am going to pause you and I'm going to deal with that because that's really going to annoy me. Um, I'm going to go off screen, <clears throat> take this off, um, re-prep the lid and get back to this stage and I'll be straight back. Alright, uh, please don't go anywhere. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. Let's try that again, shall we? So, run it through the crease. There we go. Now I'm not going to add any more colour to the brush yet. I'm just going to blend along that line to deepen up the crease there. Because what this will do, especially if you've had to create a crease, it will give you the illusion of the eye going deeper at this point because deeper colours as you'll know, if you've done any kind of art colour theory, deeper colours recede or go back, lighter colours come forward. And this is really pretty. I always struggle just here and here as well. For some reason that particular part of the skin on my eye absolutely hates pigment. I've got no idea why. It's not because there's any particularly deep creasing there or anything. I'm just patting to... Not Paddington, patting to... Rebuild pigment up. And then obviously patting that out across <clears throat> in a similar way that you would with um, a press pigment. Just going to dust away the fallout. I'm cleaning the um, colour off of this brush and then I'm going to, actually no, I think I might pick up one of these little, no I'm going to use the big one because I want to really blow it out. I'm just going to very gently buff where the two colours meet. I might pick up a little bit of that tundra just to help and make sure that I don't lose any of that beautiful light blue. So I'm just gently, gently, gently buffing over where the two colours meet just to soften that line so it's not absolutely obvious where one colour stops and the other one starts. I hope you can see the difference there between the two. Okay, so clean any remaining pigment off of that brush. And I'm going to go back into Bookworm 
and do the other eye. Like I said, with this side it's a bit easier because I can actually close the eye to show you. And obviously being blind in this particular eye, if I close my other eye, there will be a huge amount of makeup happening. So, lay the crease colour down and then start just going backwards and forwards along the lines. We're not going up the eye, I'm just going to pick up a little bit more pigment. And again, just deepen that up because we basically want this to go sort of halfway up the area that we did with the light blue. The reason I keep stopping and looking and checking is because your eyes are different shapes, so you sometimes have to make the shapes of the colour different so that they look the same, if that makes any sense at all. I hope it does. I'm just going to do like I did with the other side, just build up that pigment there and then just fade it across. And as you can see, issues again because of the deep creasing. And it looks like this eye is starting to get watery as well. Fantastic. Just what you need when you're trying to demo an eye look. But I think, I think I'm going to have to cut my crease anyway because I think both eyes are going to do that. <clears throat> so, again I've cleaned off, I picked up a little bit of Tundra and I'm just going to very gently buff where those two colours meet just to soften the line. If you feel like you're buffing the light blue away just pick up some more pigment and build it back up again. It's the beauty of makeup, you can always add more. I like that. Right. Time to cut the crease as my eyes are behaving very, very badly today. How rude. How very, very rude of them. Given how softly these are packed, there's not a huge amount of fallout at all. I'm really quite pleased with that. Right. I am going to grab my Conceal and Define in C... No, 0.5. C 0.5. Okay. And this is one of my acrylic nail art brushes that I got off of eBay, super cheap, but the reason I love it is because look how thin that brush comes down, perfect. So, for those of you who don't know the easy way to cut your crease, allow me to demonstrate. Pick up some concealer on your brush and almost quite haphazardly just Plunk it on the lid like that, and then blink a couple of times. And what will, it will do is it will transfer the concealer onto your upper lid, so it becomes much easier for you to work out exactly how high you need to go and what shape you need to use to cut your particular eye. As I said I love these acrylic brush the nail art brushes for doing these because they just I feel they give me more precision with the area that I'm cutting. Um, you know that, that that could be all in my mind. We, but I just, for me personally, I find that these are the easiest brushes to use. And I'm just sort of feathering the edge because I don't want a completely harsh line there. And then I'm just patting 
all over. You can you can feel a slight tack starting as you lift the brush back off. Now I always do one eye at a time because I want them to stay super sticky. <clears throat> And what I'll do, I'll now turn the brush round to the side that hasn't got concealer on it. And I will pat that side all over the area too. And what this will do is it will pick up any excess concealer on the lid that would mix with the shimmer and make it go dull. See how much that's picked up? Right, so I'm going to clean the cream off of that brush straight away because I always clean creams and liquids off of brushes immediately. One, it makes them a lot easier to uh, clean when you do your weekly clean. Two, makes the brush last longer. But three, and more importantly in this case, if you want to use it again tomorrow, you don't get any sort of contamination from the previous day's usage. Right. This again is from a cheap AliExpress set but you know it looks very much like the Jeffrey handles except they've got a nice green bit on the end. So I'm gonna start off am I gonna use that one? No I think I might use this one actually. Let's grab these two. Right. I'm going to start off with this slanted one, which could it could be a brow or it could be a liner brush, but for me it's a bit too thick for a liner, so this is more likely a brow brush. And this is a standard packer or concealer brush. And that's my door. Hold on. I am back. As I was saying, this one means you can get right into the corner with accuracy and then this one is great for filling in larger areas so I am going to go into Cryosphere which is the lighter of the two shimmers that I bought I can't remember if this, I think this one might be a duochrome actually they might both be to be honest, I can't remember, it's so long ago since I bought them let's watch them Very, very softly packed. I hope you can see. I'll try and get the angle right. Right. And now what I'm going to do is just gently press the brush into the concealer. that it transfers the shimmer onto the lid. Now I don't like wetting the shimmers when I do this um, because to me it, it feels like it dilutes the concealer base that you've put down and I'm just going to use this for accuracy right at the very edges there just to make sure that I'm not going over outside of the concealer that I've laid down already and then getting this larger packer brush concealer brush or whatever you wish to call it. Packing some pigment onto that. Now this method will give you fallout because you are applying it dry. So if you're the kind of person that likes to do your face first I would advise you to put loose powder down to catch it. 
Now, once I've pressed the pigment on, I like to gently smooth over with the brush, very lightly, and that just removes any loose or excess pigment that could still be on the lid. That's looking so pretty. Right, I'm just going to clean this packer brush off and I'm going to go into a Necromancer, the darker of the two shimmers. And I'm going to press that in exactly the same way. Okay. Let's see if I can get some more pigment on the brush. Right, this one is not wanting to apply to the lid quite so well, so let me see if I have got one of my... This is one of my silicone brushes that I got from Revolution. Um, putting a shimmer on with this is like putting it on with your finger. But you do tend to end up with quite a bit of fallout. So let's see if that will... There we go. I mean, you can apply it with your finger if you want, but nails like this, no thank you. So I'm just going to build that necromancer up on the outer edge there. See? And then I'm going to pick a little bit more of it up, just on the very tip of this very lightly sort of drag it across into the lighter shimmer and then I'm going to grab this one again and just clean the darker pigment off of it And I'm going to go back into Cryosphere, the lighter of the two. I don't know why I put that accent on, just felt like it needed it. And I'm going to very lightly drag that onto the darker side. And then gently buff between the two to soften the line. I hope that shows. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this. This is a Morphe M321 brush. I'm going to pick up some of Bookworm, which is the darker of the two mattes. I'm just going to add that into that outer corner there on the lid. And just gently, very gently, pull the shimmer across with pigment on the brush. So you're kind of putting some matte pigment onto the shimmer and then dragging it across onto itself. And then just patting again to build that pigment back up on that corner. And dealing with any fallout. Okay. I think that's really pretty. I really do think that's pretty. So, it's now time to repeat that on the other eye. And unlike most people, I'm going to do that on screen with you. So that if you're following along, 
you don't have to pause me or rewind to remind yourself what I did. So, haphazardly bung some concealer on, blink a few times, there we go, put that concealer up onto the upper lid, and then I might put a little bit too much concealer on this brush. Never mind. We can sort it. As you can see what I mean now, that, that actually completely covers the area where I was getting the discoloration of the matte because of my eye streaming. I wasn't going to cut my crease today, but with my eyes streaming like that I didn't really have a lot of choice. So if you do find that you're having the issue of either because of hay fever or um, you know if, you, if it's a side effect of a condition that you have, like with me with my fibro, it's apparently that's, that's just what happens when you have fibro now apparently is just great. You know, you can still kind of rescue a look because as with everything in life, you can't really say you know what you're doing when everything's going well. It's when something goes wrong and you know how to fix it that you can say you know what you're doing. I'm just going to stretch the lid out and make sure that I've got into those creases there. And you can see what I mean about this brush really giving you the accuracy that you need to get a super sharp. Because I'm telling you now, any of the pictures that you see me put up on Insta, I don't face tune. I don't. Uh, Photoshop. Uh, I don't use any filters. Unless there's an obvious Snapchat filter on your life. If I've got ears and the heart's floating around me, then clearly it's a Snapchat filter. Um, I think the most I've ever done was when it was a very, very dull, overcast day. And I literally just turned the brightness up so that you could see the colours on the lid. But I didn't smooth the shades, I didn't do anything to my skin texture. So, yeah. Right, so, turning it round to the side that doesn't have concealer on. I'm patting all over. I do think it's... I understand why people use Facetune. But I think if you're going to do that, you should have at least one picture that shows how it looks without any adjustments because you know I look at some cut creases and think oh well I could never get mine as smooth as that and then you look at it a bit closer and you're like oh but technically I don't think they got it as smooth as that you know and it's just it can be very disheartening um, I mean I'm where I'm that much older I'm kind of pff, yeah well whatever I'll do as, as well as I can so long as I'm happy with how it looks, that's great. Um, but, you know, I understand that you know, a lot of younger boys and girls and young ladies and young gentlemen who are just getting into makeup and they see that and they're trying to emulate it and just they're using exactly the same products and don't understand why they're not getting exactly the same result. And it's because, you know, the, the person that did that look didn't get that result, you know, and I, I just, I just think it's wrong. I think, you know, all right, if you've got a pimple on your nose and you want to get rid of it, fine. But I don't think you should play around with the makeup look and smooth edges and make it look so much better. 
because that's that's not fair on people that are trying to recreate it. Right, I'm just going to stretch my lid out because I know from experience that if I don't, the shimmer kind of skims the top of the creases and then I end up with it kind of flaking through the day and I find myself getting more and more colourful sparkly freckles down my eye which if I wanted colourful sparkly freckles it would be a great shortcut but when that's not quite the look I'm trying to get it's a little bit annoying if you catch my drift And you'll see when I let go in a minute just how much the eye creases by how narrow this particular stretch of blue will look. Ready? So it's here at the moment. Let go. Oh look, it's right back over there now. And that is what happens when your eye gets pulled around. Don't do it. That is my public service announcement for the day. So again, just now going in with the wider brush to build the colour across the lid. And as I said, gently smoothing across the lid to get rid of any loose pigment that could still be there. And then I'm going to grab my silicon brush, or you can use your finger if you wish. Um, or the little sponge tipped applicator would probably work for this as well. The other ones that we all usually throw away, yeah, that, that would probably work for this as well. And I'm just going to pop this deeper shadow in. The Necromancer. i got to admit, I am loving these shadows. I am definitely going to keep my eye out for when she has shipping deals again. And I am absolutely going to get some more. Might try out some. Uh, see, I like buying quads. I like buying four colours where I feel I can make numerous looks with. You know, I'll normally get a light and a dark matte and a light and a dark shimmer. And for me, you can produce a lot of different combinations just with those four shadows. So that would be my advice to you. If you're going to buy some individual shadows because you want to try doing a look, get yourself a light and a dark matte and a light and a dark shimmer or two complementary shimmers. So like, you know, when I got my when I got my coloured rain ones, which I still haven't tried yet, I got a silver and I got a copper. So, you know, just... I think so long as you've got a light and a dark matte, um, you can achieve most looks that you want. So now I'm going in with that Morphe M321. Just going back in with, what was it, Bookworm. Just fluffing the edges. building that pigment back up again on the outer edge. Mm. 
with Morphe brushes, some are okay, some are crap. Um, this one's okay. I quite like this one. I won't ever mention a Morphe brush that's crap, basically. Or if it is crap, I'll tell you it's crap before I start using it. Right, I am going to go off camera and do my uh, foundation and everything. And I'll be back to finish off with the bottom of the look. So, you will see me right now. Okay, I'm back. Right, I'm going to grab uh, this flat top brush that I showed you earlier. This is actually a Morphe, but it doesn't have a number on it because it was part of the I Slay set, spelt E Y E Slay, um, Christmas 2017, I think it was. Um, but I really like this one. So I'm going to go into, still need my list because still haven't learned the names yet. I am. No, I think I need to build that. Mm. Let me just build bookworm back up on the edge there. I don't quite know why it's faded. Ugh, now I've got fallout. Bugger. So, no, this side's gone a little bit as well. Hmm. Maybe this would be better on a set base, on a non set base, then after all. Uh. Oh, I hate when blue does that. Urgh. Some powder on it. There we go. <sighs> Moral of story. Double check before you start filming again, Edge. Right, <clears throat> I'm going back into Bookworm, which is the deeper of those two mattes and apparently is the shadow I'm having the most trouble with but you know me, glutton for punishment and I'm just going to add that underneath my bottom lashes it is a really beautiful colour though, I would admit And this is the eye that I normally manage to poke myself. Oh yeah, just like that. I don't have peripheral vision. I have to rely on muscle memory and a viewfinder. And uh, as you could see just then, not always very efficient. Got. This is the brush that came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, but I love it because it's flat top but it's stubby. So I'm going to go into Tundra, which is the matte blue, the light blue, and I'm going to buff that under the bottom lashes to blend out Bookworm. help disguise that we had a little bit of fallout. See? No mistakes, just have the little accidents. I love Bob Ross. Anybody else love watching him? The uh, Joy of Painting used to be on very, very early on a Sunday morning. They used to repeat it later on in the Sunday. 
Uh, it used to be on at about sort of half two, three o'clock on a Sunday morning. So I'd be getting in from nightclub on Saturday night with my kebab. Stick that on and just chill out watching Bob do some painting, thinking, oh, I could do that. And then watch the episode again at about two in the afternoon and think, oh, no, I really couldn't do that. <laughs> I really like this look. Right, I think highlight wise I need to go bright and icy. So, I think going into a blue highlight would be a little bit too much. So I'm going to go in, I've got a couple, I've got, actually I've got quite a few blue highlights. I've got Deep Freeze by Jeffrey in you know, the full size one. I've got is it Arctic Ice, the blue one in the light platinum ice palette. And I've also got a blue one in one of my sleek shadows, but uh, highlighters. But I'm going to go with Nikki Ofra Glazed Donut. This is just a really cheap brush that I picked up from eBay years ago. We're going to tuck a little bit of that up under our brow, tail of our brow here. As you can see, beautifully ice white. You really don't need much of this to glow like a goddess. Or a god. If you're of the gentleman persuasion. Because there's no discrimination on this channel. Old, young, male, female, LGBTQIA+. You want to put makeup on? You put makeup on. If my films help, bloody fantastic. So I'm just popping this around my tear duct and then just bringing it down underneath there just to meet the bookworm and tundra. Eyes running again. Great. Just as well, I cut my crease. I was going to try and do more filming today, but I think I might have to nix that and just do some editing instead. If my eyes going to keep streaming like this, it's going to ruin this look probably before long, and that will annoy me. So I might as well use my time editing instead. Right, I'm going to come off camera, finish my highlight, bung some mascara and some lippy on, because you all know how to do that. You don't need to watch me do that. And I'll be back for my final thoughts on these pigments. See you immediately. I'm back once again. I'm running a bit warm, so hair's in a ponytail. Side bits are down. It's quite funny, I did some photos the other day with my hair like this. And I had so many of my mates going, oh my god, have you cut your hair even shorter? It looks so nice. And I'm like, thank you, but no, it's just in a ponytail. <laughs> right, the Lippy uh, is a new one for me. It's Ofra. And it's in shade Wonderland. And this is their long-lasting liquid lipstick. And, although it's shiny, apparently, aye, it's kiss-proof. That's a little bit good then. I just thought... The lilac-y, bluey, iridescent -y, shifty sort of thing would go nicely with the eyes. So I'm feeling very, very ice queen at the moment. <sighs> right, so, silliness finished. What do I think of the Cleona Cosmetics pigments? Right, let's take them all on an individual basis. Now, Tundra... Dip my finger in it. Tundra, I absolutely adore. That went on beautifully. No patching, no issues um, on a set base. Fantastic. Bookworm, 
I had to work with that a bit. You could see I was getting a little bit of patching with that. I was having to rebuild. Um, so I think this would probably work better on a sticky base. So I'm going to try these again um, on a non-set base and just see whether that bookworm performs better. It's very, very softly packed. So I think that could be one of the reasons that it's difficult to build it up. Um, and why I was having issues when I was blending it because it's so soft it was just blending straight back off again so I think given a stickier base that would perform much better that being said did I manage to get the pigmentation that I wanted for this look yes I did I just had to work a little bit harder for it cryosphere beautiful really stunning icy duochromy beautifulness um, applied with an ordinary brush without any issues whatsoever um, not a massive amount of fallout from it when I was putting it on I always get some fallout because of the method that I use to apply it but significantly less than I was expecting for a shadow which again is quite loosely pressed you will find that with indie brands their shadows usually are a little bit more delicate a little bit more loosely pressed you have to treat them a little bit gentler than you do mass-produced stuff that's like stomped down with a huge great weight or a press. Um, this one, Necromancer. If you apply shimmers with your finger, you'll have no problem with that at all. However, if you use a brush to apply them because you're not like me or you just want the more accuracy, um, you are going to need either a silicon brush or um, a sponge tip applicator to get the best depth of colour from it but you can still get the depth of colour and once it's on your eye it performs absolutely fine as you could see it's blended beautifully in with the lighter shade so overall am I happy uh, with my purchase? Yes. Am I even more excited now for Jeffrey's blue palette? Yes. Am I sending out into the universe that Beauty Bay won't get theirs until the 15th when my husband gets paid so that I can be sure of getting one? Yes, yes I'm doing that too. Um, would I buy these again? Yeah, I actually want to try some more of her, her, her shadows. Um, I am going to keep an eye out for when she has the special offer on, on the shipping again, because obviously that's the biggest problem in the UK, is, is when you're ordering um, pigments like this from indie brands that are based, in this case, in Canada. Shipping is horrific in a lot of cases. Um, I mean, a lot of, of indie brands that I've looked at that I want to buy from, the pallets say $25 and then the shipping is $25 and you're like, whoa, what? Come again? Excuse me? Um, and then you get Americans complaining when they're buying from companies like Blush Tribe, September Rose, Certify. Uh, I'm my glitter OMG and they're moaning that they're having to pay 10 quid in postage and I'm like please you want you want to try living in the UK for a couple of years and then you tell me because whenever we order from America we always get bloody import tax on arrival as well and if this sodding Brexit thing goes through we're going to start getting it from Europe as well don't get me started on that hate Brexit I just wish someone would press stop and say do you know what made a mistake we're gonna stay as we are thanks <laughs> but that being said I really really like these um, loved how they performed and when she has offers on again with her shipping I'm probably gonna indulge in a few more maybe not this year because obviously low buy but um, you know if, 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 if she does a good deal on the shipping again it's a good chance I might indulge, even though it's my low by year, because, you know, I've already broken the rules, it's only March, so... <sighs> right. 
I really hope you found that helpful. I hope you enjoyed watching me play with some blue shadow for a change. Um, I actually really like this look. I do feel like a, like I should be offering Turkish delight to a young boy. That sounds so wrong unless you read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Right, okay, uh, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube does keep unsubscribing people. Um, don't forget to check out some of my other films. Check out the girlies in the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group. And now, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.